What's up? Today I have some shot ideas for you for off-road motorcycling or motocross depending on the motorbike and we're filming with the Gion Rebel 3. As you can see it's pretty capable. I have the 135mm G Master here together with the A7S 3. So we will get some shots with that first but later we'll also switch to wide angle. We don't want all the shots to be that narrow. So I would say let's go. Now I first want to get some intro shots of him and we're starting with some closers ups obviously because I don't want to change the lens all the time back and forth. So we'll get all the teleladens shots first and I want to start with a close-up shot of his helmet hanging around and then how he enters the motorbike here. I have some cool shot ideas after that but first start with something simple introduce the character focus more on the story first it's not about getting the most fancy shots all the time. It's like always when you use tele lenses it doesn't make much sense to walk forward because you can't see much mo movement for that you want to use wide angle lenses so it's always better to move to the sides because then you get this nice parallax effect there. So for the next shot I want to move the camera up with the helmet when he puts it on so I use it in follow mode to make that a bit easier for me. I want to get a nice orbiting shot. Three, two, one, go. For well, the next shot I want to slide to the side here while he's driving away with the motorbike also with the 135 and for that I use focus tracking on his wheel Probably the wheel would not work, so we would set it somewhere to the chain area because there it stays more consistent, the focus. And aside from that, I need to use lock mode on the gimbal because I don't want the gimbal to pan around or move up or down. So lock mode is the way to go here. And you access that via the M button on the left side. I want to film close to the ground because then you see more of the motion. And I also put a plant in the foreground as a foreground object. So to, that makes the motion even more visible. And then I use the joystick here to, to set everything up. What we're trying to do with the next shot is to film a vortex of his wheel while it's spinning, like basically doing a burnout. And then when the camera is top to the bottom, then I want to move the camera over the ground so that we can transition into the next shot by starting the next shot pointed to the ground and then moving up. Can be a bit tricky though because you need perfect timing for that. We also use slow motion here, 120 frames per second to be able to do a speed ramp there into the transition. We'll see how it turns out, but I imagine that pretty cool. So that was the first shot out of two, like to make smooth transition or seamless transitions. You always want to end one shot as you begin the next one. And that's why the next one we will do a bit later because there I want to use a wide angle lens. We're now first going filming some tricks with him where I basically want to play a bit around with foreground objects and this lens. And after that I change lenses to the white one and then we get the second shot there to have the transition. I directly want to go into a jump there. Now we're doing a pretty standard shot. I'm using the plants in the foreground, the foreground objects and basically doing a slide shot while he is jumping there. And I want to cut that together later with some wide shots of him jumping so that I have like a more tight angle in between that looks a bit different, I have a different perspective. Now he was standing there at first so that I can get focus because we're using manual focus here otherwise it would be too fast for the autofocus likely so it's important to use that here. Okay I really like the shot but it's definitely too fast. You would absolutely have to put everything to slow motion to make that work and to be honest it would be so slow then that I could also get that shot with my hands and this is why I would say let's change now to, or let's switch now to the wide angle lens. Now we're doing the second shot from this intro transition shot so I want to point the camera down to the ground and then come up. Problem is of course he is not a wall hack, we're not in counter strike so he can't drive through me. So uh, he would have to drive somewhat around me and maybe I would have to walk behind him while putting the camera up. So I would say you drive just next to me and the moment you pass me I, I will run behind you <laughs> and try to get the shot. I also want to get a second shot here from the side. At 17 millimeters, if you have 16, you 16. That's yeah, just a super wide angle to really make it look high. Now we got two really nice angles from the side, but I also want to get it from the front because if you have this sidewards movement, it's always really nice to have this like, I wouldn't call it parallax effect in that case because it's not that close, but just having a slight effect right in front of the motorbike it's definitely fun to watch. I have to be fast though that he doesn't crash into me, so it will be a bit risky, but let's do it. My name is Pascal Basel. Welcome to Jackass 5. <laughs> <Whoa. Whoa. laughs> 
<laughs> it looks like it hit the camera. It felt like I hit the camera. <laughs> so now we got the jumping shot and I want to transition to the next obstacle here, which is the curve. So I want to film close up just of him driving because he throws a lot of sand in the air. And after that, I will get one inside shot in the curve because I, I just feel like it looks really nice when you have a wide angle on that. Then after that, I plan a sequence of like him entering the forest here. That's like also one to what I want to show you here. It's not necessarily about do this cool shot, do this fancy shot. It's more about really thinking how you can connect the shots later in the timeline so that it makes sense from a story perspective. That shot I want to follow him so I need to pan and that's why I use pan follow here. You could also use follow, we'll have to see about that because Maybe if he comes close or a bit farther away, you might want to adjust the, the tilt quickly. So follow could also work for that shot. But I want to try it with pen follow first because that uh, makes it a bit smoother in the, in the tilt X. Now we got a few action shots in the open space here, but it's time to go into the forest now or the jungle or however you want to call it. And I want to transition into the jungle. I don't just want to be suddenly in there. And we will film in one shot how he lifts up his goggles. That's kind of one shot now where he breaks and then I reveal his face. So we got the first shot here, the long one. Now I want to show how we got get into the jungle. Of course, it should look cool. So we will start low here with the gimbal and then while he's riding away, I will just move the gimbal up a little bit and automatically tilts forward while doing so. So we are level with the entrance of the jungle and doesn't tilt us so that's great. And I think that's a good storytelling shot. And actually, if we want to keep the sequence short, we can cut it already after he disappears in the jungle and fade to black or something because that could already be the end of the sequence. Could insert some sound effects like, oh shit, and then you hear a crash or stuff like that. But of course, we'll also go in the jungle and get some more shots if we want to make the sequence longer. I got a new pad. A beautiful one. <laughs> oh, we're just getting a few random shots here of him driving through that jungle area. We have some pretty deep water actually here. He's going through. So this is nothing that I really planned before. I just we arrive here and we see what shots we can do. And it seems to be really fun here. Just thinking, should we place the Mavic 3 on top? <laughs> top down cool. shot. Time to go, drone and gimbal at the same time. Both in 4K 120, I love that. That's another sick shot now with the drone here. We're using the 160 millimeter lens in cinema and I fly it to the side while he's riding through the water. That will be sick. Oh my God. The so next shot here, I just want to do a quick tracking shot, having the buses in the foreground. Well, he is riding in the background and focusing on him, so to show a bit of the roughness of driving in the jungle. For that shot I use lock mode, because here the camera should not move in any direction. And yeah, that's the second last shot I would say. After that, we just let him ride away and finally finish, because we shot quite a lot today. Now we're getting our last shot here. It's just a shot of him riding away out of the forest, so that will be the very last one. So I want to move the camera down here, so it like disappears here behind the bushes. Everything gets dark, so you can blend in the tide or whatever you want after that. Could also lift it up, but we had the shot where the camera moves up already before, so I want to make it a bit more interesting by moving it here. What I also like here is that all the leaves are in the foreground. You know, I'm a landscape videographer, I like foreground objects. So, like having the leaves here in the foreground as well, that looks really good too. So. Yeah, that will be the last shot. So we got all of our shots and as you probably noticed, it was not the same as most other videos where it's like you have to get this fancy shot and that fancy shot. It was more like, okay, let's get here and actually tell a story with our camera and the gimbal. Because let's be honest, you can get tons of vortex shots and lots of other insane movements and stuff like that. And it is probably cool to watch for a minute or so, but there's not really a story behind it, nothing. It doesn't feel like it's connected. So by shooting like we did, today like really thinking after every shot okay what could be the next shot that makes your videos a lot better and as you can see you still can incorporate lots of really cool shots with gimbals such as the Rebel 3 and if you think that the Rebel 3 is a bit too clunky for you then I also have two reviews here of the M2S and the M3 check them out as well I hope you enjoyed this video if yes then please leave me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing see you